Welcome to two, part two of the Dimensioning Review, Dimensioning and Tolerancing Practices Lecture. Detailed Dimensioning and Holes. Detailed Dimensioning Holes involves a system of symbols for specific applications. These symbols or combination of symbols can be used to detail entire hole features, including end conditions. Dimensioning holes. When dimensioning holes, the same general rule applies for defining the diameter of, hole, of the hole, which are the diameter symbol precedes the dimension, the diameter of the primary hole feature is listed on the first line, and there are four acceptable configurations for dimensioning the diameter of a hole, including three that use leader lines and one that uses extension lines as shown on the right. Dimensioning through holes. Dimensioning through holes does not require additional symbology other than the diameter symbol. If the hole is a plane hole passing all the way through the material and it is shown graphically going through the material like in the section view example on the right. Blind holes have a bottom hole end condition that needs to be defined by a dimension by adding a depth symbol after the diameter that defines the depth of the full diameter and that does not include the drill point. Dimensioning counterboard holes. A counterboard hole is a form of hole end condition that is designed to accommodate the head of a fastener, such as a cap head machine screw. Dimensioning counterbore holes requires the addition of the counterbore symbol is added on a line after the primary hole information with the diameter of the counterbore following the counterbore symbol on the same line. That is then followed by the depth symbol and dimension added on the next line shown in the image on the right. So in our example on the image on the right, we have a 25 millimeter through hole with a half inch diameter counter bore that is 0.31 deep. Dimensioning spot-faced holes. Spot-faced holes are in an end condition similar to a counterbore that is intended to improve the surface for a fastener head to seat. The same symbology that applies to counterbores with some exceptions. Because the depth of a spot face is typically shallow and not dimensionally critical, the depth can be omitted if desired. Dimensioning countersunk holes. Countersinks are a form of hole end condition to accept the taper of a flathead fastener, such as a flush rivet or flathead screw. The countersink is a symbol added on the line after the primary hole information, and both the countersink diameter and the included angle follows on the same line. So in this example, we have a 0.25 diameter through hole with a countersink that's 0.5 in diameter with an 82 degree included angle. Chamfers. Dimensioning chamfers. Chamfers are angled edge breaks that require one of the following options to be dimensioned properly, regardless of whether they are internal or external in nature two individual size dimensions for the chamfer edges or one size dimension for the edge location and an angle dimension as shown in the exa first example on the right or define 
either the size and angle or size dimensions for edges with a leader line callout as shown in the second image on the right. Please note the example of the internal chamfer in the textbook is not necessarily incorrect, but would be typically classified as a countersink rather than a chamfer. Dimensioning slots. Slots are common features and have some specific dimensioning options to choose from, including dimensioning the width and overall height to the tangencies of the end of the radii as shown in the first example on the right, or dimension the width and length to the centers of the end of the radiuses as shown on the second example on the right, or to find the width and overall length using leader line callout as shown in the last example on the right. Note with all three schemes, the radii that terminate the ends of the slot need to have a note denoting that it is a radius, or it is left up to the interpretation of the tradesperson to decide the shape to make. Dimensioning threads. Threads are a common graphically complex feature that are often represented in a simplified form as hidden line geometry as shown in the two views on the right. And for external threads can also be represented by a series of lines and dashes as shown in the image on the right. A leader line call out is typically used to define the diameter, pitch, and class of a threaded feature. The thread in this example is a half inch diameter th thread with 13 threads per inch and is to be made to the universal national course standard and to be made with a class two tolerance standard for the thread and the external thread is denoted by the letter A. Dimensioning techniques. There are two techniques or methodologies for determining the approach to dimensioning multi-view drawings, which are contour dimensioning and geometric breakdown dimensioning. Contour dimensioning is the preferred method, but for best results, it is best practice to sketch out your dimension scheme before selecting a technique. Contour dimensioning technique. The con contour dimensioning technique involves dimensioning features in the views that are most de descriptive of their profiles as shown in the example on the right. The geometric breakdown technique involves determining the placement of dimensions by breaking features down into basic geometric shapes as shown in the example on the right. In the example, the shape of the device is broken down into two rectangles with holes in them and a cylindrical boss. The textbook discusses 13 guidelines for best practices for dimensioning multi-view drawings, which are derived from ASME standards. We will go through an abridged version of the list and please see the textbook for the full descriptions. Here are the first four. One, every dimension must have an associated tolerance reflected on the drawing. Two, dimensioning a feature more than once is not permitted. Three, dimensions should be placed in the view that clearly describes the feature. This is also considered the contour dimension method. And four, maintain a minimum spacing between object and between multiple dimensions. Moving on to guideline five through eight, we have five, a visible gap shall be placed between the ends of extension lines and the reference features. Six, 
manufacturing methods should not be specified. Seven, avoid placing dimensions within the boundaries of a view. And eight, dimensions for materials typically manufactured to a gauge or code numbers shall be specified by numerical size. That means that it should have its physical size and not be listed by its gauge or standard number. Guidelines 9 through 12 are next as we approach the end of the list. 9. Unless otherwise specified, angles shown are assumed to be 90 degrees. 10. Avoid dimensioning hidden lines. 11. The depth and diameter of blind, counterboard, and countersunk holes may be specified in a note. And 12. Di diameters, radii, squares, counterboards, spot faces, sinks, and depths should be specified with the symbol preceding the numerical value. And last but not least, the final guideline is number 13. Drum roll, please. Leader lines for diameters and radii should be radial lines. Remember this list and use it as a checklist when you are proofing your drawings or checking the work of others. The next section dives into more detail about tolerances. Tolerance is the total amount of dimension may vary by defining the maximum and minimum size limits. Tolerance can be expressed in four ways. Direct limits, that is tolerance values directly applied to the dimension. Geometric, uh, which is a tolerance using a system of symbols, datums, and basic dimensions. Notes, to reference a specific condition. And general tolerance, which is a tolerance note in the title block that applies unless otherwise specified. Direct limits are the tolerance values that are directly applied to a dimension and can be expressed in several forms such as limit dimensions where the numeric value for upper and lower limits are displayed. There must be a 1.5 millimeter or 1 16th of an inch space between the upper and lower limit values as shown in the image on the right. The second form is the plus and minus dimensions, which can occur as bilateral tolerance, like the one shown on the right, or non-symmetric with a set of upper and lower tolerance values. The third is the single limit dimension, where the minimum or maximum is denoted by the abbreviation min or max after the value to describe the limit condition. The second way to express tolerance is geometric. Geometric tolerancing uses a system of symbols and datums and basic dimensions. Datums label features with letters, like the example on the right, datum A is defined as the larger diameter of the object. Basic dimensions are surrounded by a box and denote a theoretical perfect size without tolerance and must be related to a feature control frame for tolerance information. The feature control frame is made up of boxes denoting geometric control tolerance and applicable datums. The feature control frame in the example shown on the right calls for the smaller diameter on the object to be concentric to datum A within a diameter of 0 0.01. By displaying the graphic symbol for concentric, the tolerance, and the associated data may. Notes. Notes can be used to communicate tolerance to specific conditions, like the examples below. General tolerances. 
General tolerances are defined in a block note typically found in the title block for the drawing. Unless otherwise specified, the tolerance applied to all dimensions on a drawing and the tolerance is based off the number of digits past the decimal displayed on the dimensions denoted in the chart by the number of X's. In the example on the right, if a dimension has one digit to the right of the decimal, the acceptable tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.020. If a dimension has two digits to the right of the decimal, the tolerance tightens to plus or minus 0 0.010 and tightens further to plus or minus 0 0.005 if a dimension has three digits to the right of the decimal. Surface texture, texture symbols. The last subject covered in this lecture are what the text calls surface texture symbols, but are commonly called surface roughness in the manufacturing industry. Surface texture symbols called finish marks denote allowable surface finish or roughness conditions. Finish, the finish mark in its most basic form appears as a check mark symbol as shown in the image on the right. The finish mark de denotes that a surface will have a value above the V shape to denote the maximum allowable surface roughness. If two numbers appear, then the surface roughness must fall between the two values. This form of the mark does not specify any other requirements. A finish mark that incorporates a line across the V-shape, as shown in the, on the right, allows a maximum amount of material that can be removed to achieve the desired finish. A finish mark that includes a circle tangent to the V-shape on the symbol, as shown on the right, prohibits any material removal. And the final and most complicated version of the finish mark will have a tail, as shown on the right, and will denote detailed surface roughness requirements. Please note the dimensional requirements of the finish mark, which is sized by the proportions of the drawing text height. Refer to pages 861 through 863 in the text for more information on the elements of finish marks. This concludes this lecture. Thank you for listening. I'll see you online.